New day on the job, a new incident to handle. This time, it was another D-Class incident, but of course, things had to go down the shitter right from the get-go. Today's incident was a humanoid type. After vermin and beast types, humanoids are the most common ones. While most of them are D-Class or C-Class, there's a huge difference to them. Beast and vermin might be big and dangerous, but they lacked intellect, brain power, so to speak. They function purely on instinct. The humanoid types, they are an entirely different story. I mean, sure, they're only D and C class. And sure, they're often weaker than usual creatures, but those fuckers are smart. Which means they're often harder to kill. Most of them are creatures barely resembling humans. Nothing but twisted things, walking on two legs and hiding in the gutters or abandoned buildings. Those are the easy ones. Things get troublesome when they mingle, they hide in plain sight, and they take on the guise of a normal human being. And guess what I had to handle today? Today's signature was located right in the middle of an apartment complex. When I saw it, I frowned instantly. Well, oh, isn't that fucking great? I cursed to myself. And sure, if I was lucky, the fucker might hide in the basement or in an underground garage, but honestly, who am I kidding? When was I ever lucky? No, I was sure that today's job would most likely be a bit trickier. If you hunt down a creature in an abandoned building, or hell, the freaking sewers, you can go in guns blazing. Now the fucker mingles, you gotta be clever and handle the job with finesse. Two things I was severely lacking. So, to sum things up, today was another shitty day. First thing I had to solve was how to enter the building should the fucker hide in one of those apartments. You can't just wave your gun around and tell people their neighbors have been replaced by some supernatural creature that needs a few more breathing holes, so... After some deliberation, I went with a plan. Simple enough even for me. I'd pretend to be a handyman tasked with checking on the heater system, the pipes, or god knows what. After that, I printed out a fake repair bill. Headquarters had prepared me with an entire database just for those kinds of incidents. An old, worn boiler suit above my protective armor completed the disguise. My equipment today was a bit different from usual. As I said, I had to be clever and discreet and... Well, I fucking hated it. Almost on instinct, I reached out for the stack of grenades in the back of the storage room. I could rest one of my little friends before I put it back inside. Not today, lovely. After that, I picked up a silencer for my trusty gun, and after a few moments, I grabbed one of the tactical combat knives. Sometimes things could get messy, and sometimes you won't be able to use a gun, especially in close quarter encounters. The moment I arrive in the area, I hit up my close range scanner. Now, where are you, you fucker? Against all odds, I was still hoping to find it hiding in an underground area, but of course, the odds were against me fucking great. The thing was hiding in one of the apartment buildings. On the third fucking floor, to be precise. When I tried the front door, I found it locked. No surprise there. I stared at the bell system for a moment before I shrugged and pressed a random button. I kept ringing for what must have been a full minute before an angry male voice answered. Yeah, what the hell do you want? Hello, sir. Uh, I started my friendliest and most upbeat of voices. I'm here for a scheduled repair in the apartment of uh, Mrs. Matthews. Got an appointment with her right now, but there seems to be a problem with their door opener. If you could be so... I didn't have to go any further. There was a string of mumbled curses before the door was unlocked. <laughs> Easy as pie. I made my way inside, up the stairs, and entered the third floor. There are about a dozen apartments, so I hit up the scanner once more, and after only half a minute, I would pinpointed the fucker's location. Apartment 307. I took a deep breath, rummaged through my pockets, and pulled out the now crumpled up fake repair bill. For a moment I stared at it and frowned. Yeah, good job you freaking idiot. I rang the doorbell and prepared myself. No more fuck ups I told myself. A moment later a dizzy looking brunette opened the door. Yes, hello? She greeted me with a half questioning, half confused look on her face. Uh, good day miss, I'm here to check out the heater in your apartment. I was informed by your renting company that there's some trouble with it so you know, I have to have a look at them, and... There's already someone checking out the pipes in the apartment. He told me that there's... Shit. I cursed out loud, 
The fucker was clever, all right. It must have taken the guise of some handyman to stalk its prey and enter their places. It's exactly what I would have done. The woman's face changed to a scared expression when she saw the frown on my face and heard my curse. She tried to close the door in front of me, but almost by instinct I pushed my foot in. Hold on, miss, and listen. I started improvising in a low voice as I forced the door open again. I haven't heard of any other appointments regarding your apartment, so the man inside might very well be a scammer. It's very common these days. There's some, uh, uh, people who pretend to work for our company to get entry into people's apartments. They do, they do it to steal their valuables and hack into their Wi-Fi. I'm not sure how familiar you are with online banking or PayPal hacks, but I assure you it's no joke. You can cross-check the form I brought. Should give you a sufficient proof of my identity. Without waiting for an answer, I shoved the crumpled up repair bill into her face and pushed myself past her. No, but she protested, but I cut her right off. I'm going to give my supervisor a call to see if he can identify the man. Should there be any trouble, I'm going to inform security right away. God, I thought. What an absolute load of bullshit. There's no way she was going to believe me, was there? To my surprise, she seemed to buy it. Okay, but what if he's dangerous? You don't have to worry about a thing. Like I said, security's just a call away. For now, though, please... Step outside, at least until I've confirmed what's going on. Finally, she gave me a weak nod and pointed towards the bathroom at the end of the hallway. While I was still staring at her, I took up my phone and pretended to call my supervisor. This seemed to convince her, and she stepped outside. All right, fucker. Time to get to know my little friend here, I thought as I caressed my gun an inch closer towards the bathroom. The moment I stepped in, I found an older man below the sink, busily working on it toolbox was propped up next to him, and when he noticed me, he looked up in confusion. What the hell? He stated. Don't tell me that idiot Christopherson messed up with that assignment again. He squinted his eyes and heaved himself upward. Now wait a minute, who the hell are you? I stared at the guy about to pull out the gun, but something didn't add up. Now this was too good, this was too real. Was this guy really... From down the hall, I heard the door being thrown shut, followed by a succession of disguising noises, flesh rending, bone snapping, skin stretching, and then footsteps, big, hard, fast footsteps. Someone, no, something was getting closer and quickly. I threw myself aside, barely avoiding the swing of a huge clawed hand, and crashed hard against the bathtub. A second later, something huge and contorted rushed past me, straight for the poor old handyman. What the? That was all he brought out before a blood-curdling scream cut through the air. Blood spattered and the wet sound of flesh tearing drowned out the man's screams. Motherfucker! I screamed as I ripped out my gun. A contorted, blood-covered version of the woman's face jerked in my direction. You made a mistake, asshole! I brought out, grinning as I pointed the gun at it. You should have focused on me first! My finger was on the trigger, and as I was about to press it, one of the creature's arms shot forward. Too slow. Too far away, I told myself, but right then, my hand was batted aside. The shot trailed off and the gun clattered from my hand, vanishing somewhere in the bathroom. The creature's arms had become an elongated mess of bones and flesh. They had stretched further and further beyond what should have been possible, and that's when I realized what I was up against. Worst case scenario, there was a frickin' shapeshifter. The creature's mouth opened to a wide grin, revealing rows upon rows of long, needle-like teeth. The thick, heavy tongue pushed outwards, licking blood and gore from its lips. When the creature pushed itself upward, I realized how huge it was. Its legs had changed into a twisted mess of muscle. Its arms were dangling monstrosities in the clawed hands, scratching over the ceramic tiles of the floor. For an instant, the creature's hungry eyes met mine, and then... Then it rushed me. I tried to throw myself back into the hallway, trying to get out of reach, but the thing was too fast, its arms too long, the claws tore over my chest, ripping apart the boiler suit and leaving a deep gush in my protective armor. I didn't even have time to curse as a second attack followed. This one aimed right for my head, I jerked to my left, but I still felt its claws scratch over my skin on my left cheek. Fuck! I screamed in pain. I felt blood running down the left side of my face. The creature giggled in anticipation, licked the blood of its claws before it attacked once more. This time I could avoid it, fled down the hallway and threw myself into one of the other rooms. The bedroom. Shit. Freaking shapeshifter without a gun. This is gonna get ugly. Really ugly. 
I didn't have time to think, though. The creature crashed into the room right behind me, and a moment later, it was upon me once more. I ducked under a sideways sweep, but it left me wide open for a second attack. I felt a hot, sharp pain on my right side as the claw cut through the protective armor. The fucker had only grazed me, but it hurt like hell. I screamed, almost toppled over, but forced myself to keep my balance. Another attack followed, but this time I was ready. Combat knife in hand, I dodged and rammed the blade deep into the creature's arm. It screeched up, pulled free, and then crashed its entire heavy body against me. The force of the attack almost threw me off my feet. I was dizzy, my head was spinning, but I saw its giant mouth open. Almost in slow motion, I saw its jaw unhinge, its neck push outward, and when the head jerked forward, I let myself fall to my knees. Combat knife in hand, I pushed myself forward, straight against the creature's body. The blade cut through the leathery skin and muscular flesh below with ease. I pushed myself upward, driving the knife into the creature's body with my entire body weight. There was a loud, guttural scream. This time, the fucker was hurting. It was hurting bad. It tried to get free, tried to get away. And at that moment, I threw myself sideways, still holding onto the knife. The creature's chest tore open into a wide arc. Blood, bluish blood, erupted from the wound in his chest, drenching me in the entire bedroom floor. There was another ear-piercing scream. The creature batted me aside, throwing me against the wardrobe at the back of the room. All the air was driven from my lungs, and I collapsed to the floor. God damn it. Why won't you fucking die? The creature's eyes focused on me once more. It took one step, then another, before it staggered and crashed down right on top of me. Then it lay still. Fucking hell. I finally brought out, panting, and pushing the disgusting body off me. I was covered almost completely in its disgust and blood. The smell made me gag for a moment. I fought myself back to my feet, checked the creature once more before I rubbed the blood off of myself with bed sheets. Only when I had cleaned myself up did I contact headquarters. Hey, I, uh... I want to, uh... Yo, I, I took care of the creature, but the noise might have alerted one of the other residents. There's was also a victim, a handyman. Nothing I could do, fortunately. I think it's best. Mommy, what's going on? I heard a quiet voice from outside in the hallway. Moments later, knife still in hand, I found myself face to face with a small boy about four years of age. Standing in the bedroom's door. His eyes grew wide. He stared crying and brushed away. Shit. Exterminator 7D11087. What's the situation? Instead of answering, I stumbled after the little boy who'd retreated into the living room. Fucking shit. I should have checked if someone else was around. Thing must have kept the boy alive to blend in better. Shit. I fucked up. I fucked up big time. I stood there in the door of the living room. I saw him cowering in one corner, half hidden behind the couch, sobbing hysterically. I took a step back and relayed the situation. Outside, I could hear the blaring of the fire alarm and set off to get the rest of the residents out of the building. There's a problem. We got a survivor. The creature was a shapeshifter. It took the place of a young woman. Kept her son around. He's currently in the living room, requesting permission to take the child to a hospital to... That won't be necessary. Exterminator 7D11087. The computerized voice cut me off. The building's being locked down as we speak, and our cleanup crew is already on the way. We assure you, we're prepared to handle the situation. There's no further need for your involvement. Okay, but what about the fucking kid? I yelled into the phone. Don't tell me! The situation's under control. Return to your base of operations immediately. Further dissonance will be deemed as offense and will be punished accordingly. I stood there. Staring at the boy. Open my mouth to protest, say anything. There was nothing I could do. I mean, I'd already gotten a warning. And as I told you, you don't mess with headquarters. I took one last look at the scared little boy. I, I cursed myself. Picked up my gun. And I left the apartment. Shit like this happens all the fucking time. Evidence is a big no-no, but so are witnesses. With a sour taste in my mouth, I made my way down the stairs outside. Outside people were driven back by the police. One officer noticed me in the state that I was in and demanded to know who I was, what I was doing here. He was quickly pushed aside by a man in a dark suit, and after a few words, the officer took one more gaze in my direction before he nodded, 
going back to where he'd come from. I turned back towards the building once more before I went on my way. I told myself to head straight home, but before I knew it, I was on my way to the closest liquor store. As I said, in this line of work, you can use the occasional drink. Or even a few, for that matter. Fuck monsters. And fuck headquarters. Hey there, kids. It's me, Mr. Creepasta. And I wanted to tell you, thank you for watching today's video on YouTube or listening to tonight's episode of the podcast. If you guys are watching on YouTube, then that means you can find the podcast on Spotify or anywhere else that you happen to listen to podcasts. And if you guys are listening on the podcast, hey, if you want to find some older episodes or a whole bunch of stories you've never seen before, you should check out youtube.com slash mrcreepypasta. And no matter where you are, I really appreciate you hitting that subscribe button and hitting that bell reminder, just so that you can always find a new story as soon as it becomes available. And I want to give a big thank you, as always, to all of my Patreon subscribers on Patreon. Pa patron? All my patrons on Patreon. You guys are the real MVPs. You are the ones that allow me to do stuff, like getting specific stories just for the channel. All those wonderful things that come from Dale Drake, those are because of all of you. If you guys want to see more of that, then I would really, really, really love if you guys could help support on Patreon.com slash MrCreepyPasta like some of these wonderful guys, such as Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Stephanie Butler, Bobby Carmen, Tristan Pelton, Chance Burnett, Diana Krause, Chaos Arts, Cryolinian, Milk and Meal, Silty K. Sterlerson, Zachary Graphius, It's All About That Fucking Music, Gorang Trimegacy, Maria Walker, Tanya Oren, Pain Gravy, Crazy Kid, Mr. Marcus Blitz, Ika Limchak, Dirt Diver 030, Matt Bach, Dabbles Raz, Voice of Sand, Coffee Zombie, Matthew McNeese, Chelly J, Jeremy H, Raltazal, Ficomel, Nana, Nick Weaver, Milton Lake, Tolly Sue, Sky Mara Ravenswood, William King, Darth Milver, Michael Ortiz, Satanic Aries, Nessie, Butterhawk 764, Lambda M98, Harley, Billy Morrow, Sashi Sazaku, My Body Sounds Like Rice Krispies, Kaylee Ambrose, Suji Campbell, Stricken, Azarine Fox, Freddy Krueger, Nicholas Sicardi, Happy Birthday Jason Wilson, Lisa Cottrell, Caspian, Hades Nephew, Tater Chip, Acid System, Prozac and Pancake Appreciation Society, Cryptic Nightmares, Kiri the Sloth, Tommy Green, Fester Lampshade, Sky Harbor, Nico Kyle, Raphael. Rodriguez, The Ginger Bros, Aaron Stormcrow, Daniel Paulson, Trace Miles, and Corey Kenshin. You guys, as well as everybody if you look down in the description, and everybody that can even just give one dollar to be able to help things out, I really appreciate it. If you guys would like to join this list of names that I horribly, horribly mispronounce, check out patreon.com slash mrcreepypasta, and honestly, even you guys who just listen, you watch, you comment, you like, you subscribe, thank you all. I really appreciate it. And sweet dreams. <laughs>